One issue with the setup that we used for our LED matrix was we had a relatively large current passing through the GPIO pins. As we turned on one column at a time, and each LED required 4 milliamps, the total current passing through the GPIO pins attached to the anodes could reach 12 milliamps. This is a slightly uncomfortable situation to be in, as the GPIO pins shouldn't be stressed beyond 16 milliamps. We can solve this problem by connecting each GPIO pin to a transistor. This will allow us to use a very small current from the GPIO pins, though the circuit will get a little more complicated. Here I've used three PNP transistors connected to the anodes, and three NPN transistors connected to the cathodes. With this setup, the current powering the LED goes from the 3.3 volt rail to the ground rail, instead of being powered directly from the GPIO pins. It's important to include resistors connected to the base of the transistors to limit the current being drawn from the GPIO pins. If you're unfamiliar with using transistors, a good place to start is by watching the tutorial on using NPN transistors. Let's first look at the cathodes. As we've already said, each branch requires 4 milliamps when the LED is lit. Thus, we must choose the resistor on the base of the transistor with this in mind. If we assume a beta value of 75, the current on the base must be about 0.05 milliamps. The voltage across the resistor is 2.6 volts. Thus, using Ohm's law, we need a resistor no greater than 49 kiloohms. I've chosen to use 47 kiloohm resistors. For the anodes, we'll need three times the current when all three LEDs are lit. Thus, we need to use resistors a third of the size compared to the ones that we used on the cathodes. That is, no greater than 16 kiloohms. In this case, I've used 10 kiloohm resistors. We've now got the appropriate setup for our matrix, but we'll need to make some small changes to our code. Recall that if we wanted this LED to light up, the anode pin needs to be set high to 3.3 volts, and the cathode pin needs to be set low to 0 volts. With our new setup, the PNP transistor must receive a low signal for it to become conductive, and the NPN transistor needs a high signal to become conductive. So we must change the Python code to reflect these differences for both the anodes and cathodes. Let's first change how the anodes are set up. With the anode pins now connected to a PNP transistor, we need a load to turn on the LEDs. Thus, when setting them up, we'll set each pin high, which means no current will flow. Now, when we want to turn on a column, we must set that pin to low, and then, after that, turn that pin off and set it to high. For the cathodes, we need to make a change to the any variable. For instance, let's look at the first element, 1. In the new setup, for an LED to light, the cathode pin must be set high. So for this frame, where only the center LED is lit, we should use the following code. For now, I'll just leave this code like it is, so we can see what the output looks like. So when we run our program, we see that we get the negative image of our code. If you'd rather not flip all the zeros and ones in the animation variable, you could also write a little code to get Python to do the flipping for you.